Okay, can everyone see um, this conditional overview? I hope. And uh, so I'm just gonna go through this one. And if you, you have questions um, at the end, uh, we can we can talk through this, but let me just go through these conditions for you. So if you have studied conditions before, um, you might recognize the the grammar structure as conditionals. Uh, otherwise, they're sometimes called if clauses or if statements. And so um, we use them to talk about things that are hypothetical, and that means that they're not real. So hypothetical or unreal situations. We, we use conditionals when we want to talk about things that we hope for, things that we, we wish would happen. We also use conditionals when we talk about the past with some regret. Um, if you Google it and you want to study conditionals, you can, you can Google first conditional, second conditional, third, and then there's also one called the zero conditional, which isn't commonly used because it's just kind of a statement of the obvious. The condition that we're looking at in unit eight is this first one, and it's called the first conditional or, or um, the real possibility or the future real conditional. And in this chart, uh, you can see that we start with an if, the if word, and then the condition, and that condition is going to be in the simple present tense. And then the result, we'll come back to this one in a little bit, but here's an example of it. If it snows tonight, comma, I will not come to your house. Okay, so that's that's a real possibility. We live in Wisconsin, and it could very well snow uh, at any time. The second one is is the one that we call an unreal possibility or the dream condition might might summarize it. Um, in my opinion, this conditional is very fun. And um, <clears throat> I always make the joke that it's a good one if you uh, are on a date or you want to get to know someone because it allows you to express your hopes and dreams. And when we're in the early stages of relationships, we always want to share who we are on the inside. And so in this case, um, you can share some of your values or your, your hopes or your dreams, things that are important to you. So uh, this one, we use the simple past or the past progressive in the condition. And the result clause is would, not will, because it's, it's not real. So if I had a lot of money, I would buy a huge house. And so the reality of the situation is maybe I don't have a, a lot of money and so I'm not going to buy a huge house. Um, or if Jackson were going to the party, he would bring a lot of food. And so the reality is Jackson's not coming to the party so he's not going to bring a lot of food. The third one um, is is the no possibility. And, and this is the one that uh, people use when they want to express regret over a past decision. And in this case, we use the past perfect in the condition. So if I had gone to college, if I had studied more, if I had made a different decision, um, all of those are in the past perfect. And then the result we use would or would not have and the past participle. If I had gone to college, I would have become an engineer and developed children's toys, and that would be a fun job, okay? So again, you're, you're looking back and expressing regret over a past decision. The third one, is, I'm sorry, the fourth one is called the zero conditional, and we use this one when we want to talk about general truths or scientific facts, um, maybe with imperatives, um, in this example, if you eat all the pizza, it will be gone. So that's just a, a true statement. And, and so we can see here, if you can speak English and Spanish, then you are bilingual. It's, it's a zero conditional again, because it is um, making some very obvious types of statements. If ice is heated, it will melt. Those are obvious statements.
Okay. So again, in our book, in Unit 8, Lesson 2, we will focus on this first condition, the real possibility. Again, present tense in the condition, future will, plus the base verb in the, in the result clause. So at this point, please open your book to Unit 8, Lesson 2. page 148 and 149. Our theme here is going to be related to identifying the rights of people accused of crimes. And let's take a look at the notes here real quickly. So um, again, conditional statements have an if clause and a result clause. Uh, to form it, just like we said, use the simple present in the if and use will or other modals, can, could, may, might, uh, plus the main verb in the result clause. And then just like any <clears throat> type of clause that starts with if or when or where, uh, we can put those at the beginning of the sentence or the end of the sentence. Use a comma when you use an if clause at the beginning of a sentence, okay? And so here we can see that in this chart, the first example, if you decide to answer questions without an attorney present, here's my comma. And the third example, if you cannot afford an attorney, here's my comma, right after the if clause before the result. But when you start with the result and have if at the end of the sentence, just like other adverb clauses, we don't use a comma there. So you will still have the right to stop answering at any time if you decide to answer questions without an attorney at present, okay? All right, so that's a quick um, lesson on the form and the function of the first condition or the future real conditional do you have any questions about form or function?